Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Gabe and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna go through things that I pack for an overnight or multi-day kayak camping trip. I'm out here on the Choctahatchee River, just a few miles east of the Choctahatchee Bay. And my son Noah and I have just spent uh, eight days. This is our ninth day on the river. We started in Alabama and worked our way south and we're um, going to the ocean. If you would like to see that video series in its entirety, click on the card or look in the description below and I'll put that down there. And uh, I have a short video and a long video chronicling that adventure. But in this video, I'm just gonna go through the gear that I took on this trip while it's fresh on my mind and the trip is not even yet over. So first and foremost, the number one thing you wanna have is water. Um, the availability of water is so important because it's easy to get dehydrated while you're out in the water, but I used to bring a lot of gallons of water with me on these trips, but one gallon of water weighs about eight pounds. The remedy to that is something like a Sawyer squeeze filter. As long as you're in fresh water, you can filter water from anywhere with this right here. A secondary filter might be something like this life straw. So I always travel with usually zero water, but I have two filters. I figured if this is one pound, not even one pound, it's better than lugging a bunch of gallons of water and I have water anywhere I want to go. I can squeeze this into um, you know, a pot and cook with it. I can pull water through the life straw. Um, the other thing you want to bring, the next item of gear, is a canteen. Now this is a two-ply, uh, it's made by, by Tal, I think it's pronounced. And um, you know, it's just got a screw on lid, but I can take this, scoop up water from the river, then use my life straw and drink straight out of this. Um, or I can take filter water from this and squeeze it into here and drink straight out of it that way. You just want to make sure you remember what you did and make sure you have a system down and, and don't, don't uh, mess up because if you drink water straight from the river, you're liable to get kind of sick. So the next pieces of gear that I highly recommend you bring is something to cook on or something to cook food in. Now I bought a Stanley, uh, just simple cook set. Comes with two cups inside, two green cups that are good for um, like drinking coffee or eating something out of like hot oatmeal. But it has a little strainer lid with these holes um, and a handle. And then this handle collapses down and folds over top to lock it all in place so that while you're traveling, it doesn't, ideally doesn't, <laughs> oh, I've got coffee in there still. I, I, you know, it doesn't come apart. This is like on these kinds of trips worth its weight in gold. Um, I can set this on a hot bed of coals on the fire or I can set it on a propane stove, which I'm about to show you. But this is um, this is great. It also has measuring measuring tools here. Um, hey, let me stop here. Let me pause here and say that all of this gear that you're seeing here in this video is available on my Amazon influencer page, which is linked below. If you buy any of this gear, would you do me a favor and buy it through our influencer page? It gives us a little bit of a kickback um, financially to where it helps support our family and helps support our channel so we could do more adventures like this. The next piece of gear I wanna show you is the Coleman Mac stove. Um, I bought this thing about five or six years ago and I have used it nonstop. I have really tortured this thing and put it through the ringer and it is, it is doing a great job. Um, this stove has these three little stands here that fold out like that. It's an ultralight stove with a little regulator nozzle on it. But I love the stove. It is uh, so invaluable to me on these kinds of trips. And I pair it with a, um, a tank of uh, propane butane mixture um, I think it is yeah butane propane mix and you screw it on the top this has lasted nine days so far well eight and a half days and I still I think I could probably get another four or five days out of it it's still got a lot of fuel in it so this is great so the next piece of gear I highly recommend you bring on any of your kayaking trips whether it's overnight or just a day trip are dry bags Dry bag, dry bag, dry bag. Um, dry bags for days. Uh, I believe in them, various sizes. These are made by Unigear, which I highly recommend this company. Um, great quality dry bags. I got three different sizes of Unigear dry bags. I got a little baby bag here. This is something, you know, they all have these straps, but this is something I can put my wallet, my keys, my phone in, um, and I don't have to worry about it. And then what I do is I take all these dry bags and I tether them through my safety leash right here on my boat. So I put them all through like this and I hook them and I put them in the cockpit of my boat. So um, if they fall overboard, uh, they're right there with me, especially if I'm going through some rapids or something like that. 
So dry bags, you can put your sleeping bag in a dry bag, you put your clothes in a dry bag, put everything in a dry bag. I love them so much. The next piece of gear I highly recommend you bring, simple, a fork knife combo just like this. Um, it has a fork and a spoon, and also it acts as a knife on the back side of here, it has a can opener on it, but this is invaluable as well. And I just keep this in my food bag. Sunscreen, self-explanatory. You wanna bring that on your next trip. Bug spray, bring that on your next trip as well. A lighter, because you're not gonna start your propane butane stove or a fire without a lighter. All right, let's talk illumination. It's important if you're you know, gonna set up camp in the dark or just you gotta get out in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom or something like that. It's important to have illumination. I chose this rechargeable uh, headlamp and you can buy these in a lot of places, but you can also get it, like I said, on my Amazon influencer page. I'll link it down below, but um, this is really nice because it has uh, white light and it has red light, um, different modes of each. Um, it can, you know, angle down if you want it to, but it's rechargeable. So I don't have to go through a bunch of batteries. It's uh, micro USB. Um, so that's really nice. I can actually recharge it from my battery banks, which we're going to talk about next. So the next piece of gear I highly recommend you bring on your next kayak camping adventure um, is some battery banks. And I have these solar charged battery banks. I think the fact that there's a solar panel on there is uh, it's kind of arbitrary. It takes about three days of direct sunlight to really charge these things back up to 100%. But these are amazing. Um, I can charge my phone, I think, two and a half times off of each of these, something like that. They're 8,000. Um, 8,000 milliamp at 1.5 watt, made by Four Patriots. Um, they have USB ports right here covered by a uh, little rubber flap. These are not waterproof, although they are a little bit more rugged than your typical ones. They have a clip here, so you can clip that on the back of your boat. Um, you can clip it on some bungees or something like that, and it'd be getting some sunlight while you're traveling. Also, the cool feature about these is there's a flashlight on the back. I don't know if it, there it is. Flashlight on the back, so you can clip it onto something inside your tent and you have flashlight, or clip it on a branch and you have light illuminating down, you know, maybe you're trying to cook dinner or something like that, but definitely bring a backup battery bank or two. You can't go wrong. You can charge your phone. You can charge your cameras. You can charge your headlamp with this. So highly recommend. One of the um, things I really recommend you bring sleeping is an inflatable or foldable sleeping pad, um, especially when it's cold out. This is an added layer, layer of insulation between you and the ground. I chose a sleeping go pad it's an inflatable green pad and it's ultra lightweight and I believe this company offers a lifetime warranty on their products um, I use this one uh, I've used it for uh, uh, eight nights in a row now and it has done me well so the next piece of gear I, I recommend you bring on your next kayak camping adventure is a sleeping bag um, Depending on the type of year, obviously, is going to determine and dictate what kind of sleeping bag and what level of thickness you bring. Right now, it's dropping in the 40s every night. Like right now, it's like 43 degrees out. Um, I chose a little bit of a thicker sleeping bag. This is made by a company called Soul Out, which uh, um, I'll put the link in the, in the video description, but also it's linked in my Amazon influencer page. I researched the heck out of sleeping bags before making this purchase, and in terms of price point and warmth, and, and quality and durability. Uh, this one won it for me and I bought these. I actually bought five or six of these for all my entire family and we've been really happy so far. The next piece of sleeping gear that I'm gonna recommend you bring, and this is gonna be a sem semi-controversial one, is a pillow. That's right. I literally took the pillowcase off of my pillow at home and uh, brought it with me and just shoved it down in the sleeping bag. It actually compresses really small inside of a, um, not a sleeping bag, a dry bag. And it compresses really small, but um, Bring the pillow that you sleep on uh, every night because comfort is so important when you're on these kinds of trips. Good sleep is what what's gets, gets you that energy and that motivation and the morale to keep going on these kinds of trips. So bring a pillow. Um, it gets your head off the ground. Don't bring those like goofy, you know, inflatable pillows and all that stuff. Like I've tried those. Nothing beats just your good old pillow from home. Yeah, it's going to get dirty. It's going to get nasty. But you know what? five bucks, 10 bucks, you can buy a new one. It's not a big deal. It's worth it to get the good sleep. And you just take it, I suppose you can always wash it. You just take it, compress it down in your dry bag, and uh, it's it's worth its, its weight for sure. It's so light, but it pays off to have a pillow. So the next piece of gear I recommend you bring is um, a tent, especially if it's cold out. You can bring a hammock if it's a little bit warmer out, but if you bring a hammock and it's cold, then you gotta bring an underquilt. Um, I, like I like a tent when it's cold because um, you know, you can actually layer the insulation over the tent, which I'll talk about here. 
in a second, but I bring a Olive Drab River Country Products tent, which I did a video on um, a couple years back, and I've used this tent extensively, and we've used it every night in the past eight nights and not had any problems. But you can check that, um, that video out in the card above um, and watch that full review, and you can buy that tent if you like. This tent comes with no tent poles, which I like, and it's cheaper that way, and it's much lighter that way. We just use the, the kayak paddles as tent poles, and then we just take it out from those kayak paddles. We just break our kayak paddles in half and use them as tent poles. So I recommend that tent. Another reason I recommend a tent is because you can put an extra layer of insulation over top of your tent, like the um, Re uh, Rainfly Revolution Rainfly that I'm using. It's camouflage, so it gives you a degree of like stealthiness. If, if you know, you're on some sandbar or something like that, or you wanna keep a low profile, um, it also, like I said, it holds that body heat inside your tent and it keeps m uh, more moisture from getting into the tent. Um, I am a firm believer that, you know, just to 100% trust a tent um, without a rain fly or additional layer um, in a downpour is kind of foolish. So I always put another layer of, um, of rain fly over top to keep the dew from penetrating into the tent. Um, but also, like I say, when it's cold and it's getting down into the 40s and the 30s, like on this trip, um, it helps trap that body heat inside your tent and keep you about five to 10 degrees warmer inside the tent. Okay, another piece of gear I highly recommend you bring is a foam pad just like this. I bought this at Walmart, I think it was four or $5. I forget the company, it says like Therma Seat on it. I don't know who made this, but this has been a lifesaver. Um, this is the first time I've used a pad like this. It's kind of like a memory foam pad, but um, I put it on the seat of my kayak and I sit on it and it just, helps with cushion and comfort but also when you get out on a sandbar and you want to prepare some food you can take this and brush it off lay it on the sandbar and you can use this kind of like a cooktop little table here the other thing that how this coming comes in handy is to put it under your hips while you're sleeping because when i you know sleep on my side on the tent on the ground my hips really give me problems and i can feel it and it begins to hurt in the morning but this has remedied that for sure this coupled with my uh, inflatable sleeping pad makes it like I, I sleep like I do at home. Obviously when you're kayak camping, you wanna bring a PFT, a, a, um, a life jacket of sorts. It's law here in Alabama and Florida. So bring that, be sure to have that. I bring an extra kayak paddle with me as well. Um, I just have it stowed down in the, in the cockpit, I have it broken in half. So the chances of actually losing a kayak paddle are pretty slim, but I figure, hey, what the heck, if. Um, it takes up, you know, if it's a couple pounds and it just takes up minimal space, it's, it's best to just go ahead and have that insurance policy there in your boat as well. Okay, I want to quickly talk about food on this trip. One of the things we've utilized the most and eaten the most are instant potatoes, um, also tuna packets just like this, and instant ramen noodles, those kinds of things. Bring some fresh fruit, um, some oranges. A pineapple, melon, something like that that you can eat to give you some good nutrition as well. Um, the other thing I highly recommend are little snack bars, like so, little chewy bars, like so, and instant coffee. So everything that you see here, all of this, can easily be prepared. Oh gosh, everything's falling. All of this that you see here can be easily prepared in this Stanley uh, Cook Cup right here. And uh, yeah. These are super nice. You can be paddling and eating uh, the uh, tuna at the same time. And it's like a lot, a lot of good source of protein. Okay, a few more items to go. Next item I wanna talk about is cordage. I like to have cordage with me on these kayak camping trips because you never know when you're gonna need it. You can tie off your boat to something. You can use it when setting up camp or you know whatever you need to do. If you need to hang up food from a tree so that raccoons don't get to it, cordage is really important. I just get 550 cord from Amazon. Let's talk about safety. In case of emergency, I have flares. These are actually military grade flares that a, a pilot friend gave to me. Um, he had left over. I have a smoke grenade on one side. I dropped my grenade somewhere over there. And then I have a red flare on the other side for at night. So um, you can buy flare guns at Walmart. You can buy them on Amazon. In addition to a flare gun, um, I have a strobe right here. This is also a military grade strobe um, that is, press this button here. And every few seconds you see that blink. Or every second or so you see that blink. So that'll last, you know, several hours there strobing like that. Um, and then, so those are in the case of emergency, if you know there's an injury or something like that and they have to like 
medevac us out of here, then I have those things available. The other thing I have is a first aid kit that I just kind of put together. I have gauze bandages, I have some Benadryl, aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol, band-aids, neosporin, and medical tape. I figure anything above and beyond that is a medical emergency um, that you know is going to require some real medical attention. Another very important piece of gear that you want to bring on a kayak camping trip is a knife. I just bring a simple uh, folding knife. You could bring a fixed blade knife, but this is really important to have if you're going to cut into any kind of uh, food packaging or you know cut some cordage or anything like that. So bring a knife. Lastly, and arguably one of the most important items you want to bring on your kayak camping adventure is a phone, some kind of communication. And I actually always bring two phones with me. Um, I bring a phone that uh, is my everyday use phone. And then I bring another phone that is a flip phone that is prepaid, but I know it uses a different set of towers, maybe like Verizon towers. Reason being is because if I lose signal on this and I have an emergency, I have a backup phone that I can just power on. Um, it's a flip phone. I don't need to do anything fancy with it. It cost me like nine $9. Um, and I just put like 60 minutes on it, but I know that it runs off of Verizon Tower. So I know that um, my, my coverage on these river trips is doubled essentially. If there is some kind of emergency, I can call 911, call a family member and, um, and give them our location pretty quickly. But having a smartphone is amazing on these kinds of trips because you can see the satellite where you're going and where you're headed. So this is arguably one of the mo most used tools on these trips right here is a smartphone. So one of the last things I want to talk about, now this is um, going above and beyond here, is if you are doing something like I'm doing and that is filming for YouTube on these kinds of trips and you have other batteries that you need to keep charged, like for instance, I have my GoPro battery, I have my phone, I have my battery banks, I have my drone that I need to keep charged. I highly recommend Rock Pal's foldable solar panel. Um, it's a 100 watt solar panel, so you can take it and unfold it. And I'll put some B-roll footage in of me doing that here. but. It's great, it's weather, it's weather resistant, water resistant. Um, the only thing you wanna keep dry is this charging module back here. In the very back, you wanna keep this dry. Um, but I plug, it has three USB ports right here, so as you're paddling down the river, you can be charging three different devices at the same time at different wattages. But so for instance, I have a Bluetooth speaker here that we've been listening to music on as we paddled. But this is only if you're doing something a little bit more intense and filming for YouTube or doing, you know, video or photography. You can bring this with you and charge a lot of devices that way. But all right, guys, I appreciate you watching this video. And like I said, if you want to see all eight or really like almost nine days of this adventure down the Choctaw River from our backyard to the ocean, uh, click on the card. And I've got a long and I've got a short video of, of that of that adventure. So. Appreciate it, guys. Hey, if you don't mind, hit thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up video. It's so cold out here. <laughs> My lips can't move. If you've appreciated this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel, and uh, we would really appreciate it. Thanks again for the support. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep it real. I gotta clean up all this mess now.